Well, good morning, church. Good morning. Good morning. Well, I've made some changes in the bulletin after <laughs> I started to Nancy. So, so the first hymn will be 368. 368, my hope is... Nancy, and then he kept saying, Sanctuary's there twice, and I'm looking at it. I'm like, oh, yes. I made several changes. And, <laughs> and, then, and I thought, who's... You know, yeah. Anyway, it was in my original one. <laughs> yeah. it, all it was a lot of fun, though. I thought yeah, it was As Sanders. I wrote, and uh, the Holy Spirit spoke to me, yeah. things got shuffled all around. <laughs> you may or may not have a message today. We'll see. I think it's too many jobs. <laughs> This week. Yeah, yeah, Wednesday night. Wednesday night, chicken and biscuits. It's going to be fun. Doing carrots tomorrow? Tomorrow. Let's see. Nine o'clock? Nine o'clock. <laughs> Whenever you get here. <laughs> <laughs> it's early today. <laughs> yes, we broke that down. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yes. I, yes, I missed with prayer in the bulletin. So, okay. Alice, I'm going to let you read. read all right. This so, at the, at the bulletin, at the beginning, there's a prayer that we need to all say together. Come, Holy, Holy Spirit, Spirit, fill the hearts, hearts of your faithful, faithful and kindle us, us the fire of your love. Amen. Amen. Are there other announcements this morning? Um, our service next Thursday. Uh, Steve, you want to say a little bit about that so people know it's coming up? It's not this, yes. not this Thursday, next Thursday. Yeah, uh, the uh, Monday Thursday service will be here at 6 o'clock. We're going to hold it up there. We're going to set up and, and reenact the Last Supper. So 
You're all welcome to come. We're going you to have to be dressed like that, too. <laughs> yeah. Do Would not tempt it? me. Do not tempt me. I know. <laughs> Bring your husband, too. <laughs> yeah. Have him dress up like that. Yeah, can you <laughs> say it? Um, what time is that at? Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Six o'clock. Okay. Okay. So we'll, we'll uh, have a meal. We'll serve communion. And we'll have a remembrance of the Last Supper. So looking forward to that as we break through into Holy Week. It's not a fun evening to reenact because we know what's coming after, but we need to do that. We need to remember. So, and Alice and uh, Debbie and all the ladies who planned the dinner, I think. So, mm -hmm. yeah, we'll be. We're going to set up in a horseshoe shape out there. And we're having uh, chicken and biscuit. <laughs> Mario will be there on the keys. So we'll have some, we're going to go some on special there. music. Maybe you can join you for some special music. Sure. That would be nice. That would be nice. Okay. So, sunrise service. At sunrise service is right here at seven thirty. We decided to do it here at seven thirty. If it's a nice day, we'll open up the doors and we'll go out on the on the landing. If it's not nice, we're warm here. <laughs> so <laughs> seven thirty is long past sunrise, but we're going to have the service at seven thirty. We're going to go right into a breakfast here, and then right into our regular Sunday service at nine o'clock. So kind of rolls along. Yeah. We need to put the sign out front. Same yeah, so not so yeah. I'm going to yeah. splash it on Facebook and all those. <laughs> well, I'll put the big sign out with all this stuff. Uh, any birthdays or anniversaries? Last week, this week? Last week? Somebody had an anniversary last week, Nancy? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody didn't want to share it with yeah, me. Yeah, no. no. Okay. I didn't leave you. Bob tells everybody. <laughs> he, didn't, he didn't tell me. <laughs> Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary to you. Happy anniversary, Bob and Nancy. Happy anniversary to you. I have to take it home to him. I will. <laughs> okay, our call to worship is Psalm 126, and that's in your hymnal on page 847. Eight or seven. Response number two today. Okay. Something very familiar. Yeah. Except yeah, it'll take me all afternoon to figure out what was that. Okay. Here we go. For the night we begin to carry with the morning light comes short. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our, our mouth was filled with laughter, and our tongues with shouts of joy. Then they said among the nations, The Lord has done great things for them. The Lord, the Lord has done, done great things for us. We are glad. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water, like the water courses in Nega. May those, those who sow so in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go forth reaping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. straight and true. Keep us focused so that we might win the prize which you give to all who finish the course. Amen. 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 And our first hymn is Grace Alone. And nope. Did we no. change that? Uh, okay. Yes, yeah, did. Uh, okay. We moved the, second, the first one to the second slot and it's 374. Standing on the front. See, you give them a little leeway in how far he goes. It's just a suggestion. You haven't seen anything yet. <laughs> no. No, you haven't. 
So I brought the, brought a new toy in today to break this out on you. Like I'm really happy you're moving things. Well, I'm not going to be moving permanently. <laughs> so anyway, I haven't played this in a long time either because since our uh, music ministry has lost the other backup players, right now I'm moving to the guitar. <laughs> Intensive care, not as not, not the physical. really most intensive, but still special care. She, uh, for those of you that may not know, Stephanie Grace Morrison's daughter, Stephanie, uh, got COVID and then it went into pneumonia, which 
really damaged her lungs severely. She's mm. having a hard job recovering. Mm. Mm. Yeah? We need prayers for George Place. He fell getting off the bus down in Myrtle Beach, and they finally convinced him to go to the hospital and you know, check it out. And the doctor doesn't want him to do anything for two weeks. So they're stuck down there. Mm. Mm. Is, is he in the hospital down there, or do they have to? I don't know. All I know is he went to the doctor's, probably at the emergency room. But um, I'm sure that they're just laying, laying low. Well, I ask because my sister lives in Little Beach, so. If, well, Sharon and Roy are down there, too. Oh, so right. I'm sure that they contacted them. Prayers from the family of uh, Joyce Brown whose service was Friday, so she mm -hmm. passed away. It was a large service. I wasn't there. It was a very large service, yeah. yeah. Marty played for it, and she can tell you probably more about it than I can. Mm -hmm. If you need to know more, talk to me. <laughs> yeah, there's a big family. I didn't know most of them, and then one girl said to me, you look familiar. Mm -hmm. And all of a sudden she goes, ambulance. And I said, yeah, that must have been a while. <laughs> Um, a couple weeks ago, I mentioned that my daughter and son-in-law were going to be looking at a house. It, luckily, they did use their brains, and it was not the right house for them, and so they're staying where they're at. And that, that's a good thing. It, it's nice when they don't jump into things because Absolutely. they are known to do that. And my stepson and daughter-in-law are on their way home from Florida with his mother. Um, she's had to give up her place down there, and she's going to move in with them. Lots of prayers for my stepson <laughs> and your patients. <laughs> yes, because um, it's going to be an adjustment for all. His mother hates the cold. Mm. She's been in Florida many years, but she's just not able to take care of herself down there, and there is no family. So they will be arriving home tonight and making some decisions for Latham, Lacey, and Lynn. Please. Hard adjustments are hard. Adjustments are hard. Actually, for Bob and I too. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I'm sure because others have had adjustment plans with their houses too, right? <laughs> yes. <coughs> yes. 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 Major adjustments. Maybe tell you more about it later, yep. perhaps if they, if you want to share with them. But <laughs> anyway, some things don't always work out as we planned. Yeah. So, my uh, co co-musical uh, person in the remnants, Sandy, has some adjustments of her own. Her, lots of problems with a teenage grandson, who's now moved in with Sandy, so <laughs> adjustments. <laughs> adjustments. Yeah, that's so I pray for Sandy and her daughter, Marty, and her, her grandson, Aiden. So, so lots of adjustments needed. As we know, we knew everything when we were teenagers that age, right? And our parents knew nothing. That's right, for a long time. <laughs> it's funny how they caught up. It is. Uh, Rudy's brother Bob is home, but uh, not, not. I mean, he has a tube now, and he probably doesn't, we won't share this with other people, but uh, Rudy said it was all right to pray about it, and Bob, and everything. But, uh, he has some serious cancer issues, and uh, it will be going for we don't know what yet. We also pray for, for our own semi-attendee, Rose. Rose is uh, dealing with some serious issues as well. So keep Rose and Carmen. We were uh, lifted up in your prayers, if we would, please. Lots of things to pray for. Anybody else? Let's go to the Lord's Prayer. Gracious Heavenly Father, we do praise you and thank you. Thank you for these, these joyous praises that we, we heard earlier. Lord, we, we know you always have good things for us. Sometimes it's hard to see them amongst the midst of other happenings in our lives, but you always bless us one way or another through it all. Lord, we thank you for the the blessings, but we also come to you with our concerns. We've heard many this morning. Lots of prayer concerns for us individually, for our 
relatives, for our friends, for our neighbors, for all those in our community. So many losses, so many struggling with cancer and other disease. Lord, we thank you for being with them. We ask you to put your loving touch on them, let them know that they're not alone. And if it's in your plan, Lord, you them. But last and least, and not least, thy will be done, Lord. Thy will be done because we know you have a plan. That's the same for our world and for our country, Lord. We see so much unrest, so much concern, things out there, and we don't know where to turn right now. But uh, between the inflation and the expense of just everyday living, it's difficult on us, Lord. But you provide for the birds of the fields, for the, you make the lilies of the valley. Lily is beautiful out there. You feed all your creatures. We need to learn to depend on you more, Lord. We know that you'll take care of us because you said you will, and your word is always true. So, Lord, for our country, for our local governments, for us and our homes, for our world, we pray. We pray for our teachers and our schools and our students in our schools. We pray for our churches, our leaders in our churches, all of our churches, no matter what denomination, if they preach the word of God, your word, Lord, be with them. If it be your will in this church, Lord, bring back the young people. We keep asking, we keep preparing. So we're preparing the way, Lord. We're ready, Lord, send them to us. And finally, we pray for those concerns that we're not voicing today, but those concerns that we all may have and inside that we don't want to share with everybody else, Lord. We pray that you would be with us. We know you're with us, but give us a sign, if you would. If not, we just continue to believe in you and trust in your word. We give you all the praise and glory. We come to you with that praise that Jesus taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now it's time for our offering. So our ushers will come forward, please. you to rise if you're able and join us. We're so good night to all you. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him all creatures here below. Praise Him church, be it in service or be it in prayer, however you give it, Lord, we pre appreciate it all. Lord, we ask you to guide us now. How shall we use it in this church, in our community, in our world? Lead us, let us know how to make better use of these funds. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Now we're going to turn to uh, 398 in your hymnal, Jesus Calls. I think the 
I think the bones were saved now from the rest of the life. I didn't have any more chance. Jesus my Lord, for whose sake I have lost all things. I consider them rubbish, that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having a righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but that which is through faith in Christ, the righteousness that comes from God and is by faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the fellowship of sharing in his sufferings, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow to attain to the resurrection from the dead. Now that I have already obtained all of this, or have already been made perfect, but I press on to take hold of that of which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it, but one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining towards what is ahead, I press on towards the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenward in Christ Jesus. The second reading comes from John, and that's found in 1670. This is John 12, we're doing the first eight verses. Jesus anointed at Bethany. Six days before the Passover, Jesus arrived at Bethany, where Lazarus lived, whom Jesus had raised from the dead. Here a dinner was given in Jesus' honor. Martha served while Lazarus was among those reclining at the table with him. And then Mary took about a pint of pure nard, an expensive perfume, 
She poured it on Jesus' feet and wiped his feet with her hair, and the house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, who was later to betray him, objected. Why wasn't this perfume sold and the money given to the poor? It was worth a year's wages. He did not say this because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief as keeper of the money bag. He used to help himself to what was put into it. Uh, leave it alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks you, the God. God. Steve, you had a busy week with your work this time, with the videos and everything, so I hope this week is easier. May the words of Steve's mouth and the meditation of his heart be pleasing in your sight, O Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. Amen. Thank you all. For those of you who don't know, I've taken on a new job because I didn't have enough to do. <laughs> uh, I'm now the building the coach inspector for the town of Lake Pleasant as well. So, so I'm usually found in the office from 7 to 11 up there, but I'm in training, was in training last week as Alice referred to it. So sat behind a computer for six hours a day, four days last week. And I have that to do several times in the next up and coming months, so before I get certified. But anyway, so I turned it down twice before that, because I wasn't sure God wanted me to do it. But then uh, when I got asked the third time, because <laughs> they always wouldn't, it didn't work out, I figured, well, gee, you know, you ever heard the story of the people on the roof waiting to be saved, and God sent the, the rowboat and the lifeboat and the helicopter, and they didn't, they refused all that, and I said, wait for God, well, God answers sometimes in strange ways, right? <laughs> yeah, he answers you, he rescues you, he told me to take this job, so let's see how it works out. <laughs> so anyways, that's the, that's the background of what Alice was referring to. Anyways, forward march. Did you ever hear those words? If you were ever in a marching band or in any branch of the service in the boot camp, you've heard them. It. it means to step out and put your front foot forward, right? So good morning, church. Forward march. And I entitled my message this morning, Moving Forward. So here we go. We're about to move forward, leaving our past behind into new territory. We've been preparing to move forward with, with Jesus all, all week as we went through our, our uh, time here and drawing closer and nearer to him. We'll soon be in Holy Week. We'll soon be able to have the joy of Easter, but right now we're, we're still in that dark desert time, that forest, and learning how to move forward, learning to what to look for. Scripture Alice read this morning from Philippians 3 talked about the Apostle Paul's credentials and how he was leaving all those behind. They didn't need anything, right? Paul basically said he was pushing forward toward heaven, counting on Christ alone. Through Paul's words, God is reminding us too that we also need to do that. Count on Christ alone. We'll talk about today's scriptures a little later, but first I want to draw you to your attention to a scripture that isn't in this week's reading. And that's Luke 5, 37 through 39, it says this, And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the new wine will burst the skins. The wine will run out, and the wineskins will be ruined. No, new wine must be poured into new wineskins. And no one, after drinking old wine, What's those that new? For they say, the old is better. The old is better. I can imagine what you're thinking. Where's he going with this, right? <laughs> you hit the ball out into the right field, and I wasn't expecting to be there. That's, that's the old baseball coach talking to you here. <laughs> anyway, so what am I talking about? Well, here's the deal. Times are changing. We all scratch our heads and wonder where we're going with this, don't we? We, ourselves growing, we see ourselves growing older. We want to see new people, in this, younger people in this church. It was bad before the pandemic. Now it's even worse. You see, just a few people here and there in our pews sometimes. It was pretty, pretty lonely here in the winter. I think one time it was just three of us. 
<laughs> but uh, anyway, signs are changing. So what do we need for changing? We need new wine skins for some of that new wine. All right. Or maybe we just need to wine. <laughs> but anyways, things are not the same. But we are the older generation. We're still enjoying that old wine. Right here in our old wine skins. The new generation is like the new wine. The new wine also needs to be put in new wine skins. We try to put the old wine in the new wine skins. Or if we try to put the new wine in the old wine skins, excuse me, it just won't work, right? Scripture told us it's going to break, it's going to burst. <coughs> I'm not saying anything we're doing is bad. The message we need to hear and share is still God's word, and God's word never changes, and it's always good. Sometimes it just needs to be packaged a little bit different in those new wine skins for the new wine, for the new blood. We've been talking about that in our CLM course, right? How are we going to reach out to these people? Been working on that. Thinking about the new wine and new wineskins, so to speak. As always, the message here for us is in today's scripture, and as we read today's scriptures, I felt strongly about urging us to set our hopes and goals and lives for the future of this church high. I also heard God urge me to share that this is no time to be slacking off. We need to be ready for whatever and wherever our journey is going to take us. There's a story in our uh, disciples devotional this, uh, this week about a young girl named Rachel. Some of you have been following that in our study. Um, we read the Disciples devotional and then I send out a comment each morning and people, people reply sometimes. If you want to get involved in that, I can share that with you. But anyway, she was only eight years old. Quite advanced for her age, I think. And she read about the poor conditions in the world and the quality of water. And people, people were uh, suffering because of that. They had no clean water to drink. And she had a birthday coming up. Her ninth birthday was coming up. And so she wanted to do something about it. So instead of having a birthday party, she decided to cancel the birthday party and ask each of her friends to donate $9 towards this, this event, this, chain, this uh, project that she was deciding to go for. She uh, put a web page up a place online where people could donate, and she'd hoped to raise $300 by her birthday. Well, her birthday came and went, and she'd only raised $240, but she decided to continue. So things continued along. She left the web page up. But sadly, just after her birthday, she was involved in an auto accident. I was almost killed. But the media picked up on this. And the web page continued, and it continued until uh, September of 2011, September 30th. This all happened, uh, started at July 23rd, 2011. So in that short amount of time, it was shut down in 2011. But by that time, it had raised 1.2 million, and it had helped over 63,000 people. What Rachel started with her dream to help others and help that many people. God can take whatever little we, we have and multiply it greatly. We can do it here at this church too. I'm feeling that God wants us to move forward our missions and our dreams to help others with whatever little we have. We're already doing well with our chicken and biscuits, didn't we? Right. We need to count on God's grace and His promises to see what else we can do. There's more we can do than just make chicken and biscuits. Not that that's good, not good. That's great. 
with the with the faith uh, with faith as little as a mustard seed. You remember from Matthew seventeen twenty, can do amazing things. As Jesus said, I to truth, truly I tell you, if you have the faith that's as small as a mustard seed, you can say to this mountain, move from here to there, and it will move. Our psalm today talked about going out and planting seeds of hope. Starting with weeping and returning for the joy. Those who sow with tears will reap with songs of joy. And those who go out weeping, carrying seed to sow, will return with songs of joy, carrying sheaves with them. That's what the psalm says. The psalm says. Although things may seem sad at times, working towards a goal with God on our side will bring much joy. Rachel didn't see it in her lifetime, but it certainly brought joy and happiness to many others and served God's people well. Another psalm that we can look at for reassurance of this fact is Psalm 30. So in 30, Psalm 30, verse 5, in, in the English Standard Version, it says this, For his anger is but for a moment, and his favor is for a lifetime. We can may tarry for the night, but joy comes in the morning. I'm sure you've already heard that, right? Joe comes in the morning. We referred to it earlier, anyways. Getting back to our Philippians 3 scripture, what did that say? How did that say? Well, like the story we just heard from Rachel, Paul explains to Philippians how he had not yet achieved his goal. That he was seeking here on earth. What did he say? In verse 10, he said, I want to know Christ, yes, to know the power of his resurrection and participation in his suffering, becoming like him in his death, and so somehow attaining the resurrection from the dead. Starting in verse 12, Paul wrote, not that I have already attained all this or have already arrived at my goal, but I press on to take hold of that which Christ Jesus took hold of me. Brothers and sisters, I do not consider myself yet to have taken hold of it. But one thing I do, forgetting what is behind and straining toward what is ahead, I press on toward the goal to win the prize for which God has called me heavenly, heavenward in Christ Jesus. That's where he's calling all of us, isn't it? Heavenly. That's what we're doing, isn't it? Pressing on towards this, on through this life. We know that our earthly bodies don't last forever. Rachel's ended at age eight. Ours could end right here, sitting in these pews or walking out these doors of this church. I ask us now, do we hope for more? What is our ultimate goal? Are we just biding our time here until we are no more? How are we preparing for eternity. Those are questions that make us think, don't they? Make me think. If you have any questions or fears, don't, don't hesitate to talk to me about it. We can discuss this there. God, God assures us of those answers. He surely assures us that there's no fear, no reason to fear if we believed and trusted in his son Jesus. Speaking of his son, let's take a quick look at the scripture from John and Alice Ray. Let's dig in. First of all, the scripture indicates that Jesus was at home with Lazarus and his sisters, Martha and Mary. Apparently some of the other disciples were there too because the scripture told, how, told us how Jesus was raising the concern that the money wasn't used to feed the poor. The scripture says they were reclining at the table. You recline at your table. <laughs> well, that that takes us to uh, something that I discovered as I dug deep into these scriptures. If they were reclining at your meal, it was it was uh, more than likely what they refer to as a banquet, where they all lay around the table on the floor. They they were like this, leaning on the floor with their elbow, and they were feeding themselves with their other arm, with their other hand, and they had the feet outward. That gave Mary the access to come and anoint the feet, right? Or tickle his feet or whatever she chose. <laughs> so she anointed it. 
Mary was lovingly and extravagantly anointing Jesus' feet with oil and wiping it with her hair. And as usual, what's Martha doing? She's been doing the busy work, right? Do you remember from the, the, the scriptures with, with Martha and Mary earlier? In, uh, that's in uh, Luke 10, 38 through 42. I'll start at 40 here. But Martha was distracted with all the preparations that, they, that, that had to be made. And she came to him and asked, Lord, don't you care that my sister has left me to do the work by myself? Tell her to help me. And Jesus said this, Martha, Martha, you are worried and upset about many things, but few things are needed, or indeed only one. Mary has chosen what is better, and that will not be taken from her. So Mary was busy anointing Jesus' feet while Martha was busy. Which is more important to you? Where are our priorities? That's a topic for a different day. Where are our priorities? But back to the story. Why do you think Mary is being so loving to Jesus? I'll answer that with a question. Why do we love Jesus? And I'll answer that with a scripture. 1 John 4, 19 tells us we love because he loved us. Whoever claims to love God, yet hates his brother or sister, is a liar. And whoever does not love their brother or their sister, whom they have seen cannot love God, whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. We haven't seen Jesus, have we? But Mary had. He brought her brother Lazarus back to life. Was that not a reason to love this man? Mary loved him because he loved her first. We love God because of all the wonderful things he does for us. Because he loved us first and he shows us that all the while. No one can serve two masters. That's what happened to Judas, right? Judas had motives that were not loving, like Mary did. Judas was seeking his own personal gain and always dipping his hand into that treasury. Seeking to make himself a little bit richer for whatever reasons, we don't know. But. So, so we can go to a couple scriptures about that. Scripture from Matthew 6.24, No one can serve two masters. Either you will hate the one and love the other, or you will be devoted to the one and despise the other. You cannot serve both God and money. And then this scripture. From Matthew 6.33, Seek first his kingdom and his righteousness, and all the other things will be yours as well. Finally, we get to the big picture. What was happening in that scene from in that scripture? What was happening in John 12? Scripture also fits in with what we've been talking about today, moving forward towards the goal. Jesus was about to move onward. He was leaving his ministry here on earth, moving onward. He was moving to the cross where he shed his blood for the forgiveness of our sins. And then he'd move onward to heaven where he'd sit at the right hand of God the Father. We're going to read the Apostles' Creed before I I was supposed to read that already, but as usual, I'm not looking at both of them. <laughs> so anyways, uh, yes, Mary was anointing Jesus for his burial, wasn't he? Quoting the scripture, leave her alone, Jesus replied. It was intended that she should save this perfume for the day of my burial. You will always have the poor among you, but you will not always have me. No, we don't always have Jesus in person. But if we have asked him into our hearts, we have that Holy Spirit with us, don't we? We're about to go to the Holy Commission, but, but first we're going to read that Apostles' Creed. So if you turn in your own book, or your, book, your uh, uh, hymnal, let's see, where is that? Eight, eight, one. 
I have it here in my book. Yes, we're reading the uh, traditional version on 881 in your hymnal. If you don't know it, it's right there. So let's say this together. I believe in God, the Father, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, Son our, Lord, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, 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 suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and sitteth at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the wicked and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Now as we prepare to go to the communion, I'm going to ask Marty to come up and lead us in the sanctuary. Play that a couple times through with uh, 2164 and the faith we send. And uh, while, we're, while we're, you're singing that and praying that, it's really a prayer. I'm going to prepare us for communion. So if you're 2164 and sing that a couple times, and you'll find your litany for communion on uh, the second page of the appendix in your white worship box when we get to that. So, sanctuary, please. pray this together. Merciful God, we confess that we have not loved you with our whole heart. We have failed to be in the media church. We have not done your will. We have broken your law. We have rebelled against your love. And we have not loved our neighbors. And we have not heard the cry of the needy. And hence so we pray. Free us for joyful obedience to Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our Reverend Penny Brink has consecrated these elements, I'll remind you. So, follow me as I pray. God Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, we come before you with thankful hearts. And the night before Jesus died, he invited his disciples to come to the table and partake of the bread and the cup, symbols of the new covenant, soon to be written in his blood. They represent to us the body and the blood of Christ that was shed for us for the forgiveness of sins. On that last night, Jesus was with his disciples. He left them with this tangible remembrance that we have continued to share to this day. We remember the mighty acts of Jesus Christ when we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving, joining with Christ's offering for us. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here. Make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world as we remember him at this table. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Now I'm going to 1 Corinthians, Corinthians chapter 11, verses 23 to 26. For I received from the, the Lord what I also passed on to you. For the Lord Jesus, on the night he was betrayed, he took his bread and he broke it. And he said to them, This is my body, which is for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And in the same way, he took the cup. 
And he said, this is my, the cup of my blood. A new covenant in my blood. Do this. When you drink of it, remember me. I'm putting some of my own words in here if you didn't get it. <laughs> so when you eat this bread and drink this cup, we do it in remembrance of our Lord Jesus Christ. Alice, would you come up and join me? I'm going to serve Marty's first because I know she has to run. Don't even serve me. I have to do my thanks. Okay. It's been nice. All right. Thank you, Martin. <laughs> All right. So as you're able, you're welcome to come forward and receive. If you're not able to come forward, please uh, remain in your seats and we'll come to you. Thanks, Bobby. We're open for you. Let's go right over here and show this young lady. <laughs> Janice, Christ's body. Her body is open for you, Sylvia. Body broken for you and his blood shed for you. Steve. <laughs> All right, I'll hold Everybody's been served here, so I don't have to ask this question. <laughs> Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for this holy mystery in which you have given yourself for us. Please be with us and direct us. Let us go into the world and strengthen us with your spirit to give to others. Give ourselves to others. Amen. Send to our final hymn when we all get to heaven. Three, uh, excuse me, 701. 701. We're moving forward to heaven. Well, someday we'll be there, right? Before us, 
Go now in peace, love and care for one another in Christ's name. May the presence of the Lord Jesus guide you in the tempting times. May the joy of the Lord Jesus encourage you in the difficult times. May the power of the Lord Jesus strengthen you in dangerous times, both now and forevermore. Amen. Amen. So let's go and serve the Lord.